Hello from the United States, from the chilly coast of Maine. I, I feel like where I live, north of Boston, about three hours, it must be about as cold as it is in Sweden, which is cold and sunny and the wind blowing. Um, I hope you're all having a healthy day and a wonderful day. It's a great honor to get to visit you again after four years of absence. I, I have with me my, my picture. I'll show you my picture from when I was last in the library where you are. I hope you're all using your library every day and reading books and that a visit from me like this will <clears throat> make you feel that we are <clears throat> in fact all in this together all across the world. Uh, so take some heart from reading a wonderful book. What I'm going to do is, is read to you a little passage from a book of a memoir about my parents, which is called, uh, in, in English, it's called uh, Between Them. And uh, in Swedish, it's uh, translated by my wonderful friend, uh, Nila Lindgren, and it's published by Bromberg. So if you don't want to read it in English, you can read it in Swedish. I always tell Nila, who's a great friend of mine, that what he should do is try to make my book in Swedish be better than it is in English. So he does his best, I guarantee you. So this is from between them. Somewhere deep in my childhood, my father was coming home off the road on a Friday night. He is a traveling salesman. It is 1951 or 52. He's carrying with him lumpy white butcher paper packages full of boiled shrimp or tamales or oysters by the pint he's brought up from Louisiana. The shrimp and tamales steam up hot and damp off the slip papers when he opens them. Lights in our small duplex on Congress Street in Jackson, Mississippi are switched on bright. My father, Parker Ford, is a large man, soft, heavy seeming, smiling widely as if he knew a funny joke. He is excited to be home. He sniffs with pleasure. His blue eyes sparkle. My mother is standing beside him, relieved he's back. She is buoyant, happy, he spreads the packages out onto the metal kitchen tabletop for us to see before we eat. It is as festive as life can possibly be. My father is home again. Our, my mother and my week has anticipated this arrival. Edna, will you, Edna, did you, son, son, son. I'm in the middle of everything, normal life, between his Monday leavings and the Friday nights when he comes back, normal life is the interstitial time, a time he doesn't need to know about and that my mother saves him from. If something had, had bad has happened, if she and I have had a row, always possible. If I have had trouble in school, also possible. This news will be covered over, manicured for his peace of mind. I don't remember my mother ever saying, I'll have to tell your father about this or, Wait till your father comes home from work. Your father will not like that. He confers, they confer, the administration of the events of the week, including my supervision, onto her. If he doesn't have to hear it when he's home, with brilliant and smiling with packages, it can be assumed nothing so bad has gone on, which is true, and to that extent is fine with me. His large, malleable, fleshy face is given to smiling. His first face is always the smiling one, the long Irish lip, the transparent blue eyes, my eyes. My mother must have noticed this when she met him, wherever she did, in Hot Springs or Little Rock, sometime before 1928. Noticed this and liked what she saw, a man who liked to be happy. She had never been exactly happy, only inexactly, with the nuns who taught her at St. Anne's in Fort Smith, Arkansas, where her mother had put her to keep her out of the way. My father did not project a strength, even a, as a young man. Rather, he projected a likable, untried quality, a susceptibility to being overlooked, deceived, except by my mother. From my memory, I know he tended to stand back in groups and yet to lean forward when he spoke as though he was expecting soon to hear something he'd need to know. There was his goodly size, the warm, hesitant smile. A woman who liked him, my mother, could see this as shy, a fragility a wife could work with. He would likely not disguise things, or himself, a man who wasn't so knowing, 
that you couldn't take care of. You. There was a terrible temper, not so much anger as eruptive and impulsive born of frustrations with things you couldn't do or hadn't done well enough or didn't know. Private dissatisfactions, possibly of the sort that had made his own young father take a seat on the porch step one moonlit summer night in 1916, having lost the farm to bad investments and poisoned himself to death out of dismay. My father's temper wasn't of that sort. His kindness, his sweetness, the large forward leaning sunniness and uncertainty worked against that, allowed an opening for a life my mother could see and enter with the sound of her name, Edna. That's it. I hope that makes everybody feel that we're on the same earth together. That's how I feel this morning in Maine, uh, that I'm on the same earth with you and Mama. Um, I hope the day is good for you. Hope you stay healthy. Thank you for letting me visit. Bye-bye. <laughs>